Hey guys, this is DK Spencer and uh, this is Copperhead. So, uh, Copperhead is in need of some O-rings before I send it out to Stanley. And uh, luckily I found that out before I actually shipped it. So, this is the ASA on Copperhead. Copperhead's an FSC, not a patrol carbine. So, it's got the ASA with the, the knobby dial. So, tank's already off because typically if you need an o-ring you're not going to have to bleed your tank because it's going to do it for you <laughs> so there you go it's empty then you want to take your mag out put that aside now <clears throat> on copperhead you have to take the the, uh, the fake suppressor off first so to do that go ahead and grip here at the seam because this is sectional so grip at that seam slide that off now that allows you to be able to push in and turn to get your, you know, to release your barrel. <laughs> See, I went the wrong way. So push and release, pop your barrel out. All right. So <clears throat> at this point, you want to get your spring, put it out of the way so you don't lose it. And... We're going to go ahead and take off the, we're going to go ahead and um, take off the comp. I'm using a 3 30 seconds Allen key. Uh, remember now, this screw here is part of what holds your, you know, everything together. Your regulator to your frame and all that so okay once you get that out slide that off put it aside so you don't miss a tip okay i have me some little little tools pre-ready with the stuff that i use the most Okay, <clears throat> this is very important. There's three screws, but there's four places. The one place has a tiny little O-ring. Very, very important to not lose that O-ring. Okay, now I'm gonna clean this up and everything, but we're going to go ahead And take us a three sixteenths Allen key. And wow, that was really loose. Hmm. Okay, so got that. This is just gonna separate. <clears throat> then so. So regulator is pretty much just just about exactly like a VKS. Very very little differences. But anyway, so pop your regulator off, right? On the bottom side of it, you're also going to have two O-rings. Also important to not lose those O-rings. <clears throat> now you'll see 
I've, you know, put better springs and actually that's doubled and pretty cute. <laughs> anyway, all right. <clears throat> <laughs> so in order to not you know mar anything i like to use wooden stuff a lot so wooden dowel rod point it in a soft safe direction and that just pushes that on out all right so now that that feels pretty firm that feels actually really good. It feels like the mill sig's probably not bad. I think I think actually the culprit's gonna be from from the way it was leaking. I think it's just just this. But I'm gonna put the mill sig too. So so anyway, <clears throat> hop those puppies off. Okay, so you know those are pretty self-explanatory to get off of there, and then you got your your bad boy in here. So this is your mill cigo ring. Gently poke it with like a dental pick or something. Make sure you do not mar or touch or mess up any of the metal whatsoever around it. Don't pry, nothing, okay? Like I say, that one was probably good. I probably just wasted one, but you know, for the sake of the video and you know, for the sake of me not having to tear it back apart if I'm wrong, there you go. All right, new mill sig o ring. Now, what I do typically is I will take a crescent wrench and be a gentle, more gentle than that. Take the back cap off so that way I have good access. <clears throat> get uh, get a little laceration grease on the on the new o ring. I'll take a sharpie. I don't always do it this way, but I figured it's the easiest way to show people. So you want to try to twist it, right? So you're twisting it, right? See, it's twisted, right? And stick it in that groove and let it untwist. See that? See what I just did? Okay, see it untwisted kind of in that groove. The Sharpie's keeping it from going down and I'm just going to try to push the rest of this on down in there so and that's what I did so pushed it on down da 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 now I take one of these little wooden sticks I go around the top gently and then I get under a very bright light <clears throat> and I will look I will look at the seam So I'll basically make sure that that o-ring is not twisted in there. Like if you see it, a twist in it, that's a no good. And if you see any of it bulging out anywhere or whatever, oh, that's a no good. So there you go. I find it's easier to take the one you're going to put on here and go that way. The one you're going to put on here, go that way. Do not forget your laceration grease. Ba-doom, ba-doom, ba-doom. Okay, while, while you have this off, you want to take a flathead screwdriver, 
check and make sure, this is more important on a VKS, but check and make sure that your, your pin is still tight. I've never had a FSC pin come out. Okay. All right. Then go ahead. Put your back cap on. So you don't have to you don't have to tighten this down crazy. It's got an O-ring. Snug it down good. You don't have to come loose, but you don't need to, you know, you don't need to, you know, robocop it. So that should slide easily, but not too easily, right? But if it's like ridiculously hard, you probably got your O-ring twisted. Alright, so push it to where it barely goes on there. That's leaving it advanced. Okay. Now <clears throat> you're gonna take your take your uh, piece here, make sure all this stuff is good and clean. Make sure your little o-ring is moist. Okay. Look down in there for any debris. I'm actually gonna swab it. I just ran a paintball barrel swab down it. <laughs> you didn't miss much though. <laughs> All right, so gently, don't force anything, gently push this in. Okay. <clears throat> just push it till it's enough to where you can get this cap started. Okay. And let this, this do the rest of the work once it's, once it's started. Because you definitely do not want to push it too far. I think it causes some kind of like nuclear annihilation or something. I don't know. Something. All right. So <clears throat> make sure to hold firmly. Tighten that down. Don't go crazy, but make sure it's good and tight. We're gonna wipe this off a little. So wipe this off a little, turned into, hey, this is for a customer. Let's make it pristine and beautiful. <laughs> so here we go. All right, you're gonna you're gonna pop that puppy down on there. Put your little, put your little trigger piece on here. Make sure both of your O-rings are still in place. Can't see what I'm doing. There we go. Um, get your screw with the washer. That's the longer one. And you're gonna okay. Make sure you got nothing snagging or anything. All right, we're going to snug that puppy down. Put your lower half together. Put your flat screw back on here. And again, these, these you know, like four screws are holding all this together. Okay, so snug that. All right, now... This doesn't have a screw yet because your, you know, your comp's going to go through it. Right now, I'm going to not touch your comp because I'm, well, I've got laceration grease all over me. Um, <laughs> so uh, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and do this.
snugged. All right, so um, pull that thought. All right. Now, again, make sure that O-ring is nice, nice and moist and in place. And I'll set that straight down on it. Work your way around. Obviously, don't wring these off, but uh, they uh, they do need to be snug. <clears throat> okay, now, all right. So we're going to put on the Merciless Lethal XL comp, and then we're going to go ahead and put the last body screw in. Okay, I think I'm realizing that uh, that this screw is not going to be long enough for this comp. Oh, no, it's like, I thought, well, it's not the one I had in it, when it uh, before like five minutes ago. <laughs> So you, you have to be careful with these because <clears throat> with the with your uh, length of these screws when you're using different comps because the hole that this screw goes in is right in front of the pin that you know your barrel slides in but this the hole goes all the way through okay so um, you can actually screw if the screw is too long it will actually go up into the channel where the barrel goes and then when you go to put your barrel in or take your barrel out, it'll be metal on metal scraping. So, obviously we don't have that problem. Okay, always look down in and make sure you see your chamber. See that that's lined up. Okay. We can put this back in. Again, hold it to seam and tighten because they're two separate parts there. <clears throat> All right, this is the ASA. Unlike the ASA on a patrol carbine or a VKS, these do not bleed off. So these are like just your generic ASAs like people use on a lot of the M17s and stuff. So you turn it all the way clockwise and it's off. Now I have tested this, this exact one and left it for several days with a with a tank hooked to it and it kept pressure with you know before engaging it then you can't when you engage it you know after that um you know that's a different ball game <laughs> but uh, you can leave it that way for i can guarantee for a good bit <laughs> like I, I it never did leak down so i realize now that the tank i was gonna use to test it is uh is empty because of uh 
the fact of that the other ring's going out on So I'm going to just throw one of these on to see if we even manage to fix it. So again, all the way. Now here's the thing. They don't bleed and it's not a, a button. So it, it's pretty easy to use this to engage, right? But as far as disengaging, not so much. I mean, you can do it, but it, not so much. And you still got to fire shots to empty it out and everything. It doesn't bleed. So just bear that in mind. It's more for engaging. All right. So something to point out. See that hole right there. Okay. That hole right there causes problems if you're trying to use like a ninja tank that has two sets of rings or whatever. And every once in a while, you'll get a tank, like if the O-ring's not perfect or whatever, and you'll start having, uh, start leaking or whatever right there, change your tank O-ring, because the tank O-rings are not eternal, and people, I think, don't realize that. Uh, but they'll be like, you know, especially people that aren't experienced with taking them on and off, they're definitely, you know, playing heck on these tank O-rings. I always, if I, you know, I try to always send some red uh, tank O-rings with the stuff. Uh, so, you know. That, that's something to consider, <laughs> you know. Um, so anyway, this, I'm going to engage this. So w when you're engaging the air tank, so the first time you're engaging it, you got it filled up, whatever, we'll, we'll do a different video about how to fill the tank. But you're engaging it first time or whatever, you're, you're turning it, turning it. Okay, look, it, it they're right there. As soon as that, that plunger is pushed in and that air engages, it's instantly tight like that. Do not, do not think that you have to continue to screw this thing until it is flush up there. You do not. What I would do is turn it a quarter turn more, line up my gauge nice, that's it. Don't, don't turn it another full turn even at all. Uh, a quarter turn so that it doesn't accidentally back off past where it was engaged. That's on an M17, maybe a half turn because they're really bad for that. But anyway, so there you go, that's engaged. And if, you know, if DK Spencer knows how to build a carbine and fix a carbine, then I should turn this and it should click. And piss air. All right. I could kill myself right now. <laughs> that's 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 i i should have known because the air the way the air was leaking oh that was stupid i i went through a lot of trouble wasted uh wasted two mil sig o-rings probably all because of that little freaking co2 thing Wow. Wow. There you go, Stanley. I knew that was the problem. <laughs> so, like, I worked all day, then came home and did this all day. This is, uh, yeah, this is ticking me off. <laughs> I'm really ticked that it was that. Like, well, I'm glad I found it, though. But, I mean, you know. That was just a stupid, you know, like a stupid, stupid, stupid thing to not check. But also not really something that's high on your radar for needing to check either. Okay. Well, at least we didn't have to take that off again. That's the sucky part. Da, 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 da. Periodically check your um, screws on your FSCs and TCPs and stuff like that because, like I've said, they uh, that's what's you know hold, holding her together there. Yeah, you can get fancy and do it that way if you want to. <laughs> oh yeah. I'm like, y'all have no idea. Like, I'm leaning over all this crap trying to do this. This table's way too low. And I'm <laughs> I didn't think I was going to be doing it for like two hours. But, uh, oh, this is a bad, bad position. I'll have to rethink that. <laughs> all right. It's good lighting, though, right? Well, sort of. It was. What happened? Oh, I got a lazy light. Yeah, we'll 
deal with you another time. All right. <laughs> let's use, let's put a new tank. Oh. Because 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 because. Mag pool. All right, so same concept. Oh, it engaged. Now you're not gonna really hear anything when it engages. It just gets you know solid. All right, I'm gonna turn it like that much more. Okay, it's engaged. <laughs> uh, you know, <laughs> you better work. You better work. You better, you better, you better, you better, you better. Click me. Yay. <laughs> Let's take her to the range. All right. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> there that is. I don't know where to put this thing. Yeah, that'll do. That'll do. Okay, now what this is is uh, is copperhead, but uh, we shot copperhead before on the high psi. This is copperhead on a low psi, so this will be like the uh, the other tank I sent you. This is ammo made with the ammo six mold uh, by Brenda with the epoxy resin. So this is something anybody can buy the ammo six molds and make these. Uh, they feed really, really, really well. Um, so. And like I say, I do suggest you, you know, use a, a less output tank if you want to do shaped rounds. But anyway, so this is like 14 shaped rounds with a um, standard output pepper ball tank, uh, Copperhead FSC. Da, 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 da. And, you know, we'll just see what happens, guy. Oh, I didn't release the mag screws. All right, let's try that again. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's copperhead tame. That's, that's tame. <laughs> what is tame? I don't, it's not, it's a heck of a lot less than what the 50, whatever it is. Let's find out. <laughs> All right, here's a right bull. Okay, well, it's not that tame. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> what? Why is that that strong? 321. That shouldn't be that strong. That's four, 47 joules on the low tank. That's That shouldn't be that strong. Um, okay. You know what? I'm leaving it alone. I'm leaving it at that. So, uh, Stanley, it's probably stronger than, uh, it's pro probably stronger than, <laughs> probably stronger than what we thought before. Oh, God, we gotta find out, don't we? Alright, so, uh, whatever. Hmm. That's it. This isn't full, but still. <laughs> 9.9 .9 grams hybrid Canada riot bulls. <clears throat> Mag spring. What I was talking about on that first shot. Let me show you something. So you got a notch down here when you're loading. You can click it in. Sometimes your your mag might be stuck on that, so your first shot goes off. But it, your next one don't. You need to flick that and release it. Dee -dee 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 -dee. Da -da -da, teach you just stuff. Da -da -da. There you go. All right. <sighs> These are 9.9s, and this is a 1100 PSI output tank, and I'm probably way too close. Mm. Oh, gosh. <laughs> that ain't fair, Stanley. I told you. I told you. When, when the longer stuff stays at my house, the better off you are. You just got a 59 joule. That's stronger than my freaking patrol carbine. That's messed up. That's, 
That's messed up, Stanley. Yeah. 59 jewel copperhead.